Welcome, welcome to section 1.3 solving equations. We're going to start off right away with some vocab words. The first vocab word is an open sentence. An open sentence is a mathematical sentence containing one or more variables. Next, equation is a mathematical sentence stating that two mathematical expressions are equal. Now, a big key here is equal because you can solve an equation, but you cannot solve an open sentence. Again, you can solve an equation, but not an open sentence. Let's try the next one. Now we're going to go ahead with some words and what they mean. So here we have addition, subtraction, and everything else. And what m words mean addition? Well, we have add, sum, plus, increase, more than. Subtraction, subtract, difference, minus, decrease, less than. Multiplication, multiply, product, times, division, divide, and quotient. But the big key here is addition, sum, is to addition as difference is to subtraction. And also, product is to multiplication as quotient is to division because those are the math words, that math heavy words that we only use in math. So it's a good thing to know what sum, difference, product, and quotient all mean. Some special, special words. Such, tw such as twice is two times the number, squared, you have x squared, cubed uh, is a variable to the power of three. Now a power, a power could be anything, the power of seven, so a seven would go in this box, the power of eight, the power of nine. Anytime it said power, it would go in that box. Half is one half times the number represented here. Let's try some examples. A number decreased by ten. Well, look on your last note note sheet or your last slide, what does decrease mean? Well, de decrease means subtract, so we represent a number by x decreased by 10. And now 3 more than, so 3 more than means add, 5 times a number means multiply, and I'm just going to let the a number be a. So again, we have 3 more than 5 times a number. Well, 3 more than what? Well, I know that it's 5 times the number is going to come first. So it's 5a, or it could be any variable. And 3 more than represents addition. Now let's look, write two more. Now we're going to write an algebraic expression to represent each verbal expression. So this is the verbal expression right here for number 1. I'm just going to write an algebraic expression. Well, 2 more than means 2 plus. 2 plus what? Now we have more than 4 times the cube of a number. Well, 4 times means something along the lines of 4 multiply. Cube of the number, we go back to our last slide, we would find out that it's x to the third. So let's try and put this thing together. So I have 2 plus and then 4 times the number. I'm not going to write the multiplication sign down. I'm just going to put the x cubed right next to it. So here is 2 more than 4 times the cube of a number. Next, the quotient. What does the quotient mean? The quotient means, looking back, means divide. And what is the quotient of? 5 less than a number. So 5 less than a number. What does 5 less than a number mean? It means x minus 5 and 12. We cannot forget about that 12. So again, we're going to start with the quotient of. Quotient means division. So instead of writing out the division, I'm going to go x minus 5. And then what else means division? A fraction bar also means division. What goes on the bottom of it? 12. So it's x minus 5 all over 12. Now let's get into some properties. The reflexive property, all it states if is 5 equals 5, then you could also have a number plus a number has to equal the same thing plus a number plus a number. So it would be 4 plus 7 is the same thing as 7 plus 4. Symmetric property, if 8 equals 6 plus 2, then 2 plus 6 better equal 8. Transitive property, all it just states, if one thing equals one thing, then that one thing has to equal another thing, then the first thing has to equal the first thing. Got it? So here we have 6 plus 9 equals 3 plus 12. 
and then 12 plus 3 equals 15. Well, since 12 plus 3 equals 6 plus 9, 6 plus 9 better equal 15. And then the substitution property, all you get to do is plug one thing in for another. So if we have n equals 11, then 4n better be the same as 4 times 11, since 11 is the same thing as n. Some more properties, addition and subtraction, properties of equality. Let A, B, and C be numbers. A equals B. And so if you add the same thing to A and B, they better be the same. Same thing for subtraction. If A and B are the same number, you take C away. They better equal the same thing. Multiplication and division properties of equality. Kind of the same. Here now. Um, if A and B equal the same thing, and this is C better not be zero, because if C is zero, then we have undefined uh, solutions. But if we take C times A times B, they better be the same thing, because A and B were the same thing to start off with. Same thing over here, A and B are the same thing. You divide by the same number, they should be the same thing. All right, so let's get into solving some equations. Everybody's favorite thing. First thing we have to do here, we have to multiply. We have to follow the order of operations, which is PEMDAS, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. These things happen at the same time, left to right, same as addition and subtraction. Well, first we have to take care of the parentheses. So let's start with the parentheses. Here we go there and there with it. We distribute that three, so we have... 12x minus 6, and then I'm going to bring down everything else that I didn't use. I have minus 10x plus equals 6. Simplify. Simplify your apples. So here you have 2x's, and so now we combine those apples to be 2x minus 6 equals 6, bringing down everything else. Now I add the 6 over to the other side, so now we have... 2x equals 12. And now, what do we have to do? We have to divide both sides by 2. Divide both sides by 2. So x equals 6. Now, if I wanted to double check my work, what would I do? I would plug this 6 in for x here and x there to double check. So if you want to go ahead and double check my work, feel free. I'm going to move on to number 4. Same thing, we have to follow the order of operations. First thing we have to do is the parentheses. We have to make sure that we distribute that 2 and this 4. So I'm going to start with this 2. So here we have 4x minus 2. Now when I distribute this 4, I'm going to think of it as a negative 4. So I'm going to think of it as negative 16x when I take it times a 4 and minus 4 and then bring down what we didn't use equals 6. So again, I thought of this as a negative 4. If you want to multiply this 4 and then change the sign with the negative, that's fine. I just always think of numbers like this as a negative 4 when I distribute. So let's clean things up a li little bit. The same fruits, we have x, we have the same apples. So if we have 4 apples and we take away 16 apples, how many apples do we have? We have negative 12 apples. Then we have two numbers, which is minus 6 equals 6. Now again, get variable on all by itself. So we add 6 to the left side, add 6 to the right side. Bring everything else down. So we have negative 12 equals 12. And I forgot to throw in my x there. Now how do we get that 12 away from the x? We have to divide by negative 12. Make sure you bring that negative along. So divide both sides by negative 12. So x equals negative 1. Final answer here because we have an equal sign. Now we could go ahead and plug this negative 1 in for this x and this x. Or if you wanted to, you could skip a step and plug it in for there and see if it equals 6. Let's try 5. Now it's a little bit different. Now x is on the bottom of a fraction. Well, that's all right. We're still going to get this guy all by itself. And how do we do that? Well, the very first thing that we have to do is get that one-third out of there because we want that variable by itself. So now, 
we subtract by one third and I bring down one over x and that's going to equal one half now if you just saw this sitting here what would you do well hopefully we would cross multiply is there a different way that you can solve this absolutely but I'm going to cross multiply just remember when you cross multiply you set it equal to it's not another fraction you set it equal to each other so x times 1 is 1x 1 times 2 is 2 and so therefore x equals 2 final answer and a couple more now we are asked to solve the equation or formula for the specified variable so here number six we have z equals p q to the third times h and we're solving for h well how is this p and q cubed kind of tough to say q cubed times h how is that attached at that h it's all attached through multiplication so how do we undo multiplication we have to divide it all out so when we divide we have to divide by the p and the q cubed so we divide both sides by p q cubed or if you would rather see the division sign absolutely show the division sign now what do we have well on my left side so right here I have z over p q cubed equals now remember when I divide by p q cubed and I already have it over here it's all gone so I just cross it out and what's left h so there I just solved for h number seven try a little bit more difficult problem now we're solving for L we are solving for this term right here and we are solving for that L well before we can get inside the blue box what do we have to do we have to get that blue box all by itself so we have to undo any addition or subtraction so I'm going to undo this addition sign so I'm going to subtract PR squared from the right side and I'm going to subtract it from the left side I'm going to bring down what I have so I have s and then I have minus p r squared equals and then what's in the blue box p r l now how is this p and r attached to the l it is attached through multiplication so how do you undo multiplication you have to divide so I'm going to divide both sides by p and r now on the right side of this equation what happens to the P and R they disappear so I am left with just an L now we have to be careful with this stuff right here what do we have left I have an S minus P R squared and it's divided by I'm gonna throw a fraction bar in there because I think it looks nicer and it lines up a lot better and mathematicians just like it a lot more when we put it over a fraction bar what are we dividing by P and R and now I'm gonna leave it just like this why because I can't get rid of that PR here right I can divide it out here but it would just be a little bit more ugly I just want to keep it as one fraction bar for right now we'll get into that a little bit later in the year so now L would equal s minus PR squared and that's all divided by PR and that does it for section 1 3 solving equations good day